Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are messing with the abandoned motor some more. We have to take the timing cover off of the motor. So let's go ahead and tackle this today. Uh, on the last episode, we removed that exhaust manifold, the intake manifold, throttle body, injectors. We also removed that valve cover gasket and the whole valve cover. And we saw a problem right here. And the problem is pretty much contamination of antifreeze which leads us to believe there is a blown head gasket on this motor and there might be more issues on this abandoned motor so we have to tackle it and check it out so if you guys are interested in seeing what I'm gonna do today keep watching the video all right so pretty much the next step at this point is to remove that engine mount right over here remove the tensioner pulley we will have to try to figure out how to take this uh, pulley bolt off we tried to use the impact gun on it last time with the milwaukee and it was electric impact and it did not even budge so i'm thinking what we're gonna do we're gonna pry something against the flywheel right here and we're just gonna use a uh, a socket and a uh pipe to try to take this pulley out because we need to take this pulley out in order to take the whole valve cover assembly or the not the valve cover assembly but the, the whole timing chain assembly out here because essentially what we have to do is drop the whole timing chain out that way we can lift the head off of the block and we'll see if there's any damage in the cylinders in the cylinder walls the pistons the valves themselves because as you guys know when I do turn this motor over, I do hear a tick every time we turn the motor over. So I'm thinking maybe the valve and the piston is hitting. So uh, yeah, let's get started right here. Let's start taking off these accessory things that we do not need right now. Alright guys, so we got a screwdriver probably right against the flywheel here and uh, let's see if we can take this bolt off. The only thing is we took the straps off from the motor so now it's going to be harder to keep this motor not trying to lift off the ground. Nope, you see it's just turning over. We might have to strap this puppy back down. Oh, even the board is pulling out right now. That's how much tension we got. Nothing. Oh no. Screwdriver fell. Nope. Nope. No cigar. Let's give it another shot. I don't know. I think we're I think we're stripping this bolt, buddy. I think we're stripping it. Not good. All right, so this bolt is a 21 mil. We've been using 13 16 which I just researched. This is a little tighter fit, which should work better. So for this to be stripping already is no good. And uh, I think the one we were using has like the multi-point inside this one is just like the five point so we'll see what what happens here we do not have a 21 mil sorry guys do not have it so let me show you guys what we have around already done we got the strap over here on the engine we have the screwdriver right here we got another bolt going through here as you can see there's a hole here so i'm prying this bolt right through there to help stop it and then i also strapped up uh, the strap right on the flywheel itself to kind of help and uh, see what happens but it doesn't look too promising we're gonna have to keep trying things out let's give it a shot here see see if it lets go or not 
The most important thing is I hope the bolt does not strip. The bolt is moving. I think we got it. We got it, gentlemen. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, we got it loose. That's what I'm talking about. Excellent. Let's use this one. Beautiful. It worked. Ecstatic about this. This is probably going to be the hardest bolt we have to remove in this whole engine, and that worked like a charm. But the bolt is a little bit stripped. As you guys can see it, it is a little bit stripped. So it's not the best bolt to reuse. But let's keep going. All right, so we have to put the crank bolt back in just to align the motor in top dead center. Now that we have everything aligned top dead center, or at least is what I believe is top dead center, we can finally take this bolt out. And I'm gonna explain to you guys again what top dead center means and what this engine calls for from my research online. So you guys can see that little notch on the block and you guys can see the little notch on the pulley right there hopefully you guys can see it that means it's aligned top dead center that means piston number one and four are all the way on top of their stroke and also there are lines right over here on the cam gears themselves you can see that little line there and you can see that little line there that should be 10 and 2 which these are aligned currently 10 and 2 and you can see I took a permanent marker and I marked it black here and I made some lines here because later on during reinstallation hopefully that permanent marker is still there and we can kind of go off of that but at this point I'm going to try to take this pulley off the motor and then we'll be able to remove this cover so some of these pulleys on some of these vehicles they're actually pressed in and you need a puller set pulley puller to remove this luckily I'm just moving it out and it's sliding out like butter there we go there is the pulley or harmonic balancer or whatever you want to call it and uh, you can see that little notch right over here on top that's the one that marks top dead center now there is a little divot right over here as you can see in the pulley this aligns perfectly inside this little hole and that aligns the motor pretty much all right so at this point let's take off all these uh 10 mil bolts to show us the entire timing chain now this is all hand tools I wish I had a little electronic uh, socket or something, but I honestly like working by hand and uh, gets me more involved. I guess, yeah, the, the job is a lot slower, but you feel more involved in the, in the whole process. So no complaints here. These little bolts, they don't go in any specific order, so we can install them in whatever order we would like some other components of the motor we want to install the bolts in the same areas we took them out from such as the head from my understanding so uh, we got all the bolts out let's take the screwdriver right now try to see if we can pry this a little bit there actually is a bolt right here we have to remove that I just noticed it's a long one Oh, we got some oil spilling on the bottom here. I'm hoping we don't get a lot of spillage. There we go. And we got oil coming out. Oil is coming out and it's looking nasty. All right, let's hope no more oil comes out. I was thinking about draining the oil in the beginning but I figured I'll drain it once the head's off and the engine will be lighter and uh, there she goes 
here we have the inside of the timing cover my understanding this is the fuel pump or the, the oil pump right over here and this is the inside of the motor what do we see we see a lot of dark color if you look right here just a lot of just sludge or dirt or whatever it is again we can see the milky consistency throughout the whole thing and one thing you guys want to look at is this little key ring or whatever it's called it's right on top of the pulley bolt this needs to be aligned because the pulley is going to go back on that bolt the chain looks fairly tight these guides are solid the guides are not moving sometimes if the guides are broken they will just uh, wiggle right out so there's two se sets of gears here under tension one set of gears is for the water pump the balance shafts and the pulley and this kind of looks loose I don't know if it's just me there's like no tension on this one and again that's the water pump and again we had an issue with the, the head gasket. Maybe something is wrong here. Maybe the water pump went, I don't know. But the timing belt looks good. So the next step is to turn this motor over if we can right here, just to see how everything works. All right, so we just put the pulley back on. That way we can spin it and it won't be uh, too tight or anything. Whoever comes up with a clear timing cover would be awesome because this would be sick to see when the engine's running or just to see the condition of the vital components. Who agrees with me? There you go. It's all moving there. And you see the valves, the cams here. You see, you see look at that. Look at the timing chain. It's, it's against it and then it hits. You see, oh, right there, you see that? This is under compression right now, maybe just because it's under compression. But that's what's hitting right there. That noise we were always hearing. Right there again. I thought it was um, the valves hitting or something, but it looks like that might be a problem. Interesting. I wonder why that would be. All right guys, so I did a lot of revolutions here with this motor in this position because I wasn't able to see the top dead center that I wanted to see. But now we have figured it out. We just had a lot of corrosion and or sludge build up and dirt on these cam gears and I couldn't really see what I was looking for. So on the left side, looking from here, you can see the little notch facing the chain and you see the little triangle and it says exhaust because this side is the side of the exhaust that's what you want to be aligned in the i guess 10 o'clock position roughly 10 o'clock position moving on to the right side we have let me see if you guys can see that again a notch and an intake stamp on again this is the intake side so this is in about the three o'clock position so when you have your 10 and three and it says exhaust and intake and you know this notch right over here is probably aligned where we need it we can finally take this pulley out and then we're going to look at the key the little the little thing that sits on the bolt if it's on the 12 o'clock position we are on top dead center in the compression stroke and that's what you want because if you keep turning this you'll have different kinds of uh indicators here but they won't be on the proper stroke. Remember, an engine like this is a four-stroke engine. There's an intake side, there's a compression side, there's an exhaust side, and some other side. I'll probably list that right now so it makes more sense. But I think we are good where we are right now. So let's disassemble this, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. We got the timing cover off. We already saw how everything is. We saw that the timing chain was hitting the guide on top during some of the um, strokes so that's interesting if you know what the hell that is and why it's doing that comment down below because um, that's the noise i've been hearing and i'm curious what that is on the next video we're probably going to start tackling that timing uh chain we're going to try to take it off this disassemble it dissect it 
and again I got no guides uh, for this engine I got no um, books you know I'm just going off based on what I know and what I saw online of other people doing this so don't flame on the comments if I'm doing something wrong but do comment down below because I, I want to learn myself and get better because you know down the road I want to build a turbo motor for a car that we will buy in the future so that's all a possibility if we keep growing this channel makes more income and uh, it's gonna be fun and that's part of me trying to do what I always wanted to do cars automotive content and you know experience that horsepower so thank you guys smash that like button we'll see you on the next one peace I ain't here for the money I ain't here for the fame so it might be nice to own a jet plane I'm gonna do it all for you come along and see it's true